One of the biggest complaints that I see as it pertains to writing code in Unity's entity component system is the amount of boilerplate code that needs to be written in order to perform simple tasks. And to an extent, this is true. There are often a number of lines of code that we need to write before we set up some simple and common things like entity command buffers or different types of jobs and so on. We'll often see things with very lengthy class names in Unity ECS, and these can often be difficult to keep track of. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how I've kind of solved this problem for myself by using templates in Rider. So inside Rider, there are actually two types of templates that we can use. We can use file templates and live templates. Now, file templates are great for creating new files. Oftentimes in Unity's ECS, we're gonna be creating lots and lots of individual class files for the different types of data components and systems that we have. So it's really important that we can have some nice shortcuts to pre-populate and do a bunch of the things for us already so we can really save time in development and really focus on solving problems rather than just writing repetitive code over and over again. The other types of templates I use are known as live templates. Now these live templates are for when we already have a class file generated and we're writing code, we can basically just type out a little shortcut and then from there it enters in a block of code that we've pre-populated with some values. Now the great thing about these file and live templates is they're not just like static blocks of code, rather they're dynamic and we can kind of configure these on the fly and they fit within our existing code base already. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing these templates that I have set up, as well as I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own. By the way, if you do have any ideas for some other templates that I could add, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below or over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Also, I will include some links down in the description below where you can download these templates and import these into your writer IDE. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Rider at this time. I just think that they have a really great product and this saves me a ton of time in development. So I would highly recommend it. All right, so let's start off by talking about file templates. So there are two different ways that we can add a new file to our project using a file template. The first is by using the shortcut, which is Control, Alt, and Insert. And this basically just brings up this new little window here that asks us to create a new file in the current directory that we have selected over on the left-hand side. Now you'll see that we have options to say, add in a class or interface, assembly definition file, you know, kind of scrolling down a little bit more. We have some Unity specific things such as mono behavior, scriptable object, and so on. So for example, if we just wanted to say, create a new mono behavior, then it's gonna go ahead and ask us to type in a name. So we can just call this test mono for now. Then we'll hit enter. And then you'll see it just gives us this uh, basic template of a Unity mono behavior here. Now, there's actually another way that we can add a file from these file templates. Basically, we can just right click on any folder in our project. We'll go to add. And then here again, we have all the list of the fo different file templates that we can use. So now let's go ahead and go to add tag slash component. So you see when we go here, we actually have a number of different options for the different types of data components that we can add. Um, so, you know, we can just basically use the arrow keys to highlight any one of these, and then we can just go ahead and type in a name. So here we'll do a data component. Let's call this the move speed data. And we'll just go ahead and hit enter on the data components. Now this will basically pre-populate and create a new data component for us. Now one thing you'll notice about this that is a little bit different, you'll see that there are kind of these little boxes around a couple of the keywords here. This basically means that that is going to be a variable, so it's editable by us. Now, we can basically use either the tab or the enter keys to go in between these different variables here. And so there's a couple different types of variables that we can use. So the first one is basically one where we can select from a predetermined list of things. So in this case, we can either select a struct or a class, depending on if we want it to be just a regular data component or a managed data component. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and use a regular data component. So we'll use a struct. Next, for the type, we can select which interface this is gonna implement. So is it going to be a component data, a shared component data, system state component data, or a shared system state component data? You see what I mean about having these you know, very verbose class names, and it's obviously saving us a lot of time. Of course, we'll just go ahead and do a regular I component data for here. And then for the type, this is basically just going to be the variable type that we want. Um, so we'll just go ahead and make this say a float. And then you'll see that the last one here is the name of the variable. You know, we could call this move speeder if we want, but we can just leave it as the default, which is value. So I know I was kind of stepping through 
through things as I was creating this, but you can see how you could basically create a brand new data component within seconds, be able to jump back over to Unity and add this onto any entity within your game. So let me go ahead and show you how to actually create some of these new file templates. So just go ahead and open up the settings menu just by clicking the little wrench icon up here, and then you'll expand the editor dropdown and then go to file templates right here. Under here, you'll see the different basically types of languages that we have. So right now we're making some Unity ones. So over in the top of the screen here, these are basically the uh, pre-setup file templates. Now this is really handy because you can kind of click through the existing different ones and see how different parts of them are set up. So it's really helpful to kind of learn from these here. And then over on the very far right, we of course can create a new template here or go ahead and clone an existing one, delete it and so on. So let me go ahead and break down how I have the data component one set up here. Down below, here's the actual code that's going to be implemented when this file template is generated. Now you see there are a couple of these template variables that basically start and end with a dollar sign. So we have this header, namespace, type declaration, class, interface, T and value and end. So we can basically create variables and name them whatever we want. However, there are a few built in variables such as this end one right here that do special things. In this case, the end one basically determines where the user's cursor is going to be after we have completed editing all the variables. So right now I have the cursor say ending just kind of in the middle of the file here, but maybe we can have it, you know, even outside the namespace if we wanted to. It's just kind of, you know, wherever we want the cursor to show up once we're completed editing all the variables. Now variables can do a number of different things inside these templates, and we can figure that using this little edit variables button right here. So if we click on that, it's going to open up this little dialog window and it's going to show us all the variables that we've used inside this template here. And we can kind of click through these and you'll see that a lot of times these are all set up differently with different things known as these macros. So basically, if we click on, say, the uh, namespace one here, you'll see that it's set to default namespace for the current file and it is not editable. So that basically means it's going to pre-populate with the default namespace and the user is not going to be prompted to set up a new namespace here. Now we can click on change macro and we can go ahead and change that. And you'll see that inside here, there are a ton of different options for different macros that we can use. You know, we can pull in information about like the current date or the name of the file and so on. So I'd highly suggest you can kind of scroll through these and look through them because there's a lot of really interesting things that we can do. So like, for example, another one would be the name of the class. Basically, this uh, gets it from the name of the file, which is what we type in when we go to create a new one of these templates. So for the type declaration, you'll see that I have this one set to a comma delimited list of values and it is editable. So you'll see that basically down here I have struct comma class. So this means we can toggle basically between a struct or a class for the type declaration. For the interface, I'm doing the same thing here, another comma delimited list of values. And here's where I typed in, you know, the I component data, I shared component data, system state components, and so on. And so that's how we can kind of select through those as we're going through and editing these. The T one and the value one, these are basically just no macro selected because we want the user to basically just type in whatever they want for the type or variable name. And you'll see that I have just named these T and value like that because that's just going to basically be the uh, default value for this template here. And you see that the end variable does not show up in this list, again, because that is a special variable built into Rider. Now, one thing that I should point out is the order of these variables from top to bottom is important because that is basically going to determine the order that the user edits these when they go to create a new template. So for example, if we were to put you know value above T, then as we're going through and editing these variables, it's actually going to ask us to name the variable before we select the type of it. However, I can just put it back down to here and it will ask us that as normal. And then a few other things that I should point out, basically we can set a default file name, but most of the time we're going to be typing in a file name anyway, so that doesn't really matter. For description, this is important because this is basically going to be the unique identifier. It's how we can actually see what it is displayed as when we go to create a new one of these file types. For the group, I have this set to tag slash component. Again, you can kind of type in whatever you want here. And this is just so that, you know, I have a number of these different data components. And if I put them all in the same group, 
you know, when I go to the right click add menu, I can click on tag slash component. And then from there, it gives me the list of the different types of tag slash components that we can add into our project. For reformat and shortened qualified references, these are just going to make sure that everything is formatted correctly in our new file. For availability, I've set this to Unity Project. So this means that any Unity project, we are going to be able to add these templates to. And then finally, I have checkmarked the box for Add to New Menu. So it does show up when we right click on a folder and say, you know, add a new file. And then when you're done, feel free to just go ahead and hit the little drop down here. You'll see that we can either share this um, to just this specific solution, the team solution or the entire computer. I usually just save it to the entire computer. So now I'm just going to go ahead and show off a few of the live templates that I have set up now. So for one, I have say an EFEE, -E, which is an entities for each with entity. So you'll see that it immediately asks us to pop it an entity name. We can just hit enter and leave that as E for now. And then of course we can go ahead and select if we want to do a run, schedule or schedule parallel, just like that. And then boom, it's gonna allow us to start writing code. So we can just say, you know, E dot index, whatever we want in there. Of course, if we wanna come up and say, add a couple um, other components here, we can just do, you know, ref translation, translation. You see this is just really quick and simple for writing these repetitive bits of code. Another live template that I've set up, which we can do outside of the on update function is an IJEB or an IJOB entity batch. We'll just go ahead and hit enter. You'll see that it immediately creates a new job for us. We can create uh, a name for the job. So we can call this the turbo job. And then you'll see it's gonna ask us for a component type handle next. So for here, we can say maybe type in a uh, translation type handle and you'll see that immediately you know basically kind of dynamically using these variables and macros it's going to immediately call that variable the translation type handle furthermore down below you'll see that i'm creating a native array and it just immediately calls this translations so these are all done with macros let me just real quickly pop open the live template section of the settings Again, just open up your settings, scroll down a little bit further and you'll see live templates. So now we can go ahead and click Unity and you'll see that they have all the ones here set up for uh, common Unity operations. So, you know, there's some things like logging or creating a serialized field. But you see, here's the one that I've created for the iJob entity batch. And you see that I'm using this dollar sign T dollar sign variable in a few different places here. Um, so actually when we go to edit variables and we click on the T, You'll see that this is says edible at MO1 or MO2, MO3, because I've used this variable three different times throughout my code. This is going to show which of the instance that we're going to edit that variable at. Um, also for the lower T, you'll see that I have this set to a macro of value of another variable with the first character in lowercase. And then um, basically this just, this just allows us to check which variable that we want. In this case, we want to be looking at T. Um, and that's how we can kind of get the lowercase t translation. And then at the end, I just put an S because we want to be it to be plural because this is going to be an array. Now, real quickly, I'm just gonna go through and showcase all the file templates and live templates that I have set up. And again, down in the description below, I am going to be providing you with a link where you can download these templates and import them into your own version of Rider. All right, so we'll just go ahead and create the other tags and components. So here will be the turbo tag. You see that it's just basically an empty tag component like that. Literally within the time that it takes to type out turbo tag, I'm already ready to go. I can hop back over Unity and drop this onto any entity that I want. Next is the dynamic buffer elements. Here we can edit the internal buffer capacity to say whatever integer we want. We can, and then now define the underlying value type, say float. And then here we can call this whatever we want to call this, say the turbo value. And then again, you'll see that a lot of this stuff is already pre-populated based off of the values that I inputted in there. Here's a blob pointer, pretty simple and straightforward. And here's a blob array. You'll see again, very simple and straightforward as well. And then going back over to live templates. So here's a cool one that I've set up so we can do a new ECB. And this is just going to ask us immediately for which type of entity command buffer we want. Is this going to be a, you know, begin the initialization? Is this going to be an end simulation? Um, we can just go ahead and hit enter on that and then um, hit enter once again. You see that I'm basically just um, immediately creating the command buffer right here. One of the things that I like to do with these live templates is basically just have this, you know, kind of remind me about some of the code that needs to be written. So you'll see that this automatically generated an on start running function here. Well, maybe we already have an on start running function and then we will just have to, you know, say copy this line into the existing on start running function. 
And then this one here, usually you're gonna be using this in the on update. So I just do a cut and paste in there. So again, even though there is a couple extra steps that I needed to do on this one, it is going to save me a lot of time and just kind of remind me about the code that I need to write. That's kind of the same thing with the next one for the blob builder. You can just type in blob B, B-L-O-B-B. -B. And so for here, it just kind of reminds me about some of the things that I need to do to create a new uh, blob asset here. And then finally, I saved probably my favorite one for last, and that's the job with code. So we can just go ahead and type in a JW code hit enter, you'll see that it immediately asks us if we want to do a schedule or run, and then we can go ahead and start typing in whatever we want inside there. Now you'll notice that that one is very similar to the other live templates that we've used. However, there is one difference that I did not point out. Let's go ahead and highlight this. Let's say we want to say, add this inside a job with code. Of course, we can do this if we have you know many lines of code and we just wanna go ahead and highlight this all, add it into a job with code. So again, just highlight it type in JW code, you'll notice that the existing line of code has disappeared. However, it's not gone for long. If we just go ahead and hit enter, you'll see that we've now created a new job with code. And now all that text that we highlighted is inside that job with code. Basically, the way this works is we use another one of these special built in variables to writer, you see that there's this dollar sign selection dollar sign. So this basically means that, you know, whatever we have selected, that is the location that all that selected code is going to go inside that template. Now, the other thing that we need to do is over on the right hand side here, um, we see that we have options for generation, surround or both. Generation basically means that we're creating some new code, which is how I did, you know, the job with code the first time where I didn't have anything selected. Surround basically means if you have something selected, we're gonna go ahead and you know surround that block of code with the stuff in my template here. And both is both. You know, we want to be able to have the flexibility of you know highlighting a bit of code, putting a job with code around it, as well as creating a new job with code from scratch. All right, so that's an overview about how I use file templates and live templates to reduce the amount of boilerplate code that I need to write over and over and over again when I'm writing code with Unity's Entity Component System. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you do have any other questions or maybe some suggestions for more of these templates that I can create. I think they're pretty fun to create and of course, extremely useful. Uh, once again, remember you can go ahead and actually download these templates using the links down in the description below and add these to your writer IDE. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and the data-oriented technology stack. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.